unselfish sacrifice. We're going to get them on the run. We're going to go, go, go. And we hunt this down until we go to that goal line. We are Notre Dame. Get on the bus. Next stop, Notre Dame Stadium. From the house that Rackney built to the dynasty of Air Parsegian, this is the home of fighting Irish football. The place where greatness is earned one yard at a time. The field that forged Notre Dame legends like Theismann, Montana, and Brown. The land of never quit, never surrender. The legacy, the passion, the tradition that is Notre Dame football. ABC 57 kickoff is back. Bigger and better than ever. Another season of fighting Irish football. It all starts here. This is our house. This is our team. And this is, is ABC 57, 57 kickoff. You're watching ABC 57 kickoff presented by Afdent Dental with your hosts, Allison Hayes and Vahid Sadrazadeh. Fighting Irish are back on the road, getting ready to face off against the Duke Blue Devils. This is a live look at Wallace Wade Stadium in Durham, North Carolina, a top 20 matchup under the lights. Welcome to ABC 57 kickoff. I'm Allison Hayes. It's been a rough week for Coach Marcus Freeman and the Irish and fans as they try to move past the disappointment of last week, losing to Ohio State in the final seconds. Definitely a tough pill to swallow. Now the Irish dropped two spots in the Associated Press poll this week to number 11. They are 13 in the coaches poll and now for the second straight week, Notre Dame faces a ranked opponent in prime time. Now as for Duke, the Blue Devils are undefeated and ranked 17th. They easily beat UConn last week and won their first four games by 20 points or more. Head coach Mike Elko is no stranger to the Irish. Of course, he was the defensive coordinator under Brian Kelly in 2017. And the Duke defense is among the best in the country and expected to give the Irish a run for their money. But before we break down tonight's matchup, we need to talk about Ohio State. I know, I know. The glaring mistake Notre Dame made, of course, at the end of that game, the Irish only had 10 defenders on the field for the last two plays of the game, the most important plays of the game. ABC 57 kickoffs, Levon Whitaker made the trip to Durham, and he joined us now live outside Wallace Wade Stadium. Hey, Levon. Yeah, Allison, for the 2023 Irish defense, the buck stops with me. Those were the words of defensive coordinator Al Golden when I asked him earlier this week what happened for Notre Dame to only have 10 players on the field on the last two plays of the game and ultimately end up costing them the game against Ohio State. At the end of the day, um, if there's lack of execution or miscommunication or, or anything, uh, that, that takes away from the, the, the execution and result that we want. Uh, that's my responsibility. The Notre Dame coaching staff says they knew they only had 10 players on the field, seven ticks on the clock, ball on the one yard. We were trying to get a fourth D lineman on the field and I told him just stay off because we can't, we can't afford a penalty. I didn't have any timeouts, right? So we couldn't afford a penalty there. But that was the second play in a row the Irish were down a man. Personally, like I'm sitting on the sideline, I, I kick myself in the butt for not seeing it. The first time, Ohio State quarterback Kyle McCord bailed the Irish defense out with an overthrown pass to Marvin Harrison Jr. But had Freeman taken the penalty after noticing the missing defensive lineman, it would have put the Buckeyes on the half yard line. Let's not give them a freebie from a half yard line and um, let's try to stop them. You know, and I thought maybe they would do the same thing they did the snap before. They didn't, they ended up running the ball. Ohio State ran the ball exactly what the fourth lineman was missing. You know, to be on the losing side, it, it, it's, it, it hurts, it stinks, but we gotta own it, we gotta learn from it. But there is a lesson to be learned here for the Irish as they get ready for the Duke Blue Devils. We can't um, let 10 guys go on the field and not see it. But two, you know, we have to be able to, we came up with a call, a signal to be able to say, hey, you have to jump off sides and, and, and touch somebody on the offense so you can stop the play. 
right? And so it was a learning opportunity for myself and everybody um, involved with our program. Well, 24 hours, that's how long the Notre Dame team had to soak in their feelings after a tough loss to Ohio State. I mean, the crazy part is they scored 14 unanswered points against Ohio State just to lose in the final seconds of the game. But just as we talked to defensive coordinator Al Golden, we talked to players earlier this week. They said, listen, we cannot dwell on the past. We cannot live in the final seconds of the Ohio State loss. Instead, they must focus on Duke and every team going into the rest of this season if they want to have a successful season and a successful ending after a tough loss in week five. Well, and Levon, of course, kind of coming out this week again that this wasn't the first time the Irish have been caught shorthanded. It also happened in the home opener on Tennessee State's opening drive. But the Irish were bailed out in that situation as well. The Tigers QB under through the pass and the receiver slipped. It was a play that could have tied the game at seven all. I hate to be one of those people that is like piling it on, but this is something that just simply cannot happen. And now it's happened three times just in this season alone. Well, Allison, me, you, and the rest of America are, are not, they're not piling on Notre Dame. We're simply holding them accountable. They should hold themselves accountable. I mean, you cannot allow 10 players to be on the field at any point of the game, whether that's offense or defense. And unfortunately, that falls on, on the hands of Al Golden. And, and especially when you lose to Ohio State, I mean, that's a top 10 matchup. You lost to them last year, and you hate to see that loss come out here and and like they did last year, they came out after the game, loss to Ohio State, they lost to Marshall. So you hate to see a repeat of that this year after a pretty tough ending. I, I do think that Marcus Freeman is going to have them ready for this game. I don't think there will be a repeat from last season, but we'll see. The difference, of course, from that Tennessee State game to this Ohio State game with the 10 men on the field, no one really noticed it against Tennessee State. Everybody noticed it against Ohio State. It was brought to everyone's attention. So there's no pretending like it didn't happen. They have to be held accountable and make a plan in place to move forward. All right, Levon, we'll check back in with you in just a little bit. Now, when you think of Duke, you automatically think basketball, right? But under Coach Mike Elko, the Blue Devils football team has had one of the best starts in program history. Now, this is the first time in nearly 30 years a ranked Duke team is hosting a ranked opponent. Elko even calling tonight's game one of the biggest in Blue Devils history. This is a complete football team for sure. I, I think offensively, you know, it starts with the offensive line. You know, it's, it's going to be the biggest offensive line that we've played against. I think the way they're playing defense right now um, is phenomenal. I think they're pressuring the quarterback. They're setting edges in the run game. They're not allowing people to run the ball. They're suffocating in coverage. We're a humble group. I, I think the biggest thing is getting them to understand that they should be confident in their preparation, confident in how they've trained. It should be a great stage Saturday night. So excited for it. So. Well, Duke is led by dual threat quarterback Riley Leonard with 778 passing yards and two touchdowns plus four rushing touchdowns. That's really where he's most dangerous. On the flip side, the Blue Devils are tied for fourth in the country in scoring defense and 16th in total defense, allowing just just over 276 yards per game. Well, hey, we are just getting started here on ABC 57 kickoff. Up next, an Irish injury report. But first, here's a sneak peek at what's coming up over the next hour. He's not just an expert on your game day forecast. So that's Dave Caulfield's hot take that no one asked. <laughs> Meteorologist Dave Caulfield gives us his hot take for the Irish versus Duke. How does Notre Dame move past the heartbreaking loss to the Buckeyes? We needed to execute at the end of the game, and, and we didn't. Coach Freeman's focus, heading into tonight's matchup. Plus, you just have to pick yourself up and, and realize that you are a quality football team. We talk one-on-one -on -one with Notre Dame legend Jerome Bettis and a top 20 showdown under the lights. Where should you put your money tonight? We'll take you inside the lines of Notre Dame versus Duke. 11th ranked Notre Dame is back on the road, getting ready to take on 17th ranked Duke. This is the eighth meeting between the Irish and Blue Devils, but the first time with both teams ranked in the top 25. It's a 7.30 p.m. kickoff right here on ABC 57. Look, that is a live look right there 
of the stadium. Now, the Notre Dame wide receivers are a little banged up heading into tonight's game. Taking a look at the Irish injury report, Jaden Thomas is questionable. He's dealing with a strained hamstring. Now, Coach Freeman told us Thomas did not practice at full speed this week. And Deion Colsey is out for at least a few weeks with a knee injury. He had arthroscopic surgery this week. The Irish were already without Matt Salerno. He's sidelined dealing with a leg injury from the Tennessee State game. Now we will see if Notre Dame's slim down wide receivers room will have an impact tonight against Duke. For a breakdown of this Blue Devils team, let's go back to our Levon Whitaker at Wallace Wade Stadium there in North Carolina. Hey, Levon. Hey, how's it going, Allison? Well, right now I have a guest with me, ABC 11 sports reporter Kate Rogerson. Kate, thanks for joining us. Uh, Kate is here to give us a perspective on what's going on here in Durham with Duke, this quarterback, this defense, everything that's <laughs> going on with Duke that's got them as a number 17 team in the top 25, AP top 25 right now. Uh, Kate, we've seen a lot out of both of these teams, but tell us about Mike, El uh, Mike Elko. He's a defensive minded coach for Duke. Right. He was a defensive coordinator at Notre Dame. He also spent four years at Texas A&M. Tell us a little bit about him and his defense. I think the thing is about Coach Elko is that he's so smart. Now every coach is smart, but the thing about Coach Elko is that he knows how to build a program. He was at Notre Dame in a program that's so historic. He was at Texas A&M where football is king. And now you come to Duke where this is a basketball school. You know what I mean? They're really strong in academics. They're really strong in basketball. So he knows how to build a program and how to establish a culture. So that translates into the defense. Duke's defense, I believe, is fourth in the nation with points allowed just under nine points a game. So anything you get from Duke's defense, you got to earn it. So in terms of what they do, they play very sound, they play very simple, but they will attack and they will be ball hawks when it comes to defense. Okay, I like that perspective that this is a defensive-minded program, but a basketball school first. <laughs> when you look at uh, what he has offensively, though, Riley Leonard, the quarterback, it makes, them, makes it pretty easy to do his job defensively because you have a guy that can run and throw the ball without hesitation. The thing about Riley Leonard is, is that he had a really strong season last year, and people kind of thought last year was a fluke for Duke football, but then he came in in that game versus Clemson on the national stage, the only game on Labor Day that was played, and he shocked people. What is really dynamic about Riley are his legs. I was saying to you, he kind of runs like a giraffe. It's kind of like the team joke that he just takes off and goes like the wind. It's not that he doesn't have an arm and can't like pass it downfield. It's just they create plays for him because of his awareness. And part of his awareness and his ability to accelerate and play well in the pocket is because their offensive line has so much experience and so much depth that Riley has some time in the pocket to make those decisions and kind of digest what's out there and what's being given to him. Last, last, we got about 20 seconds here, Kate. So tell me, who's the better quarterback between Sam Hartman and Riley <laughs> Leonard? You've seen both of them play here in the ACC. And lastly, what is your score prediction on this game? Oh my gosh, I hate score predictions. Um, between the two quarterbacks, I think Riley's super young and he's learning, right? But I think something about Sam Hartman's experience. He was in the ACC. He's played at the school. He's he he. He knows what he's doing. He's shown how to overcome adversity. So I think tonight Hartman's depth will show. As for the score prediction, oh, my gosh. <sighs> Putting you on the spot. I know, I know, I know. I don't like this part. Um, I'm going to say Duke wins 24-21. Ooh, I love it. I love it. Okay, well, <laughs> okay, we got hours, I mean hours, to find out what the score would be in this game. 7.30 kickoff here at Wallace Way Stadium. I'm Levon Whitaker. Um, uh, Allison, we got a lot going on here today, so I don't, you know, 24-21, she's, she's, I, I think it's because she's here in Durham, Allison. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, she's there in Durham, she, she's the insider there for Duke. Great job, you guys. Thank you, Levon. Thank you, Kate. We'll check back in with you in just a little bit, Levon. Now, the Irish taking on Duke tonight under the lights. Up next, a check of your game day forecast, plus meteorologist Dave Caulfield. Oh, yeah, he gives his hot take. You don't want to miss that. Well, good Saturday morning. It is a beautiful day across Michigan and in Durham, North Carolina as well. Very similar weather setting up for kickoff time. If we were in South Bend at Notre Dame Stadium, temperatures would be in the low 70s and just a degree of a difference in Durham. Clear skies and beautiful in both locations, so should be great weather tonight for the start of that game and throughout uh, the rest of the contest. Temperatures in the 70s to start it off, and we're talking about uh, temperatures falling through the 60s throughout the second half of the game as well. So we are looking really, really nice uh, as we head into that primetime matchup under the lights with Notre Dame and Duke. 
really no weather worries to speak of. But initially, it was looking maybe a little bit breezy, but that part of the forecast I backed off on. So wind shouldn't be an issue. Hopefully, that doesn't uh, impact anything like the kicking game or anything like that. So it should be really nice weather. I always like having you come on and do kickoff with us because you're a, a big sports fan, big college yes, football fan. Yes. So he'll always like throw little nuggets out at me, and I love that. Like during the week, oh, did you know that when Notre Dame plays in this certain type of weather or this kind of humidity <laughs> that they win or they lose? I love that, and I think that's cool. And so last week, we're out on set getting ready to do the show, and sure. he walks over, you know, real nonchalant, and he's like, well, the hot take that nobody asked for, <laughs> and he starts rattling off all this stuff. So I, I pulled my phone out, and I started recording him. Well, you kind of nailed it on your hot take that no one asked for. Yeah, I guess so. The most important person coming back for Notre Dame this week is Mitchell Evans because he is a force in the run blocking game. And while Ohio State's defensive line is really good pass rush, they can be if they can be driven off the ball on the run, they'll be a lot less potent in the pass game and opens up the play action. So that's Dave Caulfield's hot take that no one asked for. I love it. You nailed it. I wow. mean, Mitchell Evans <laughs> was a big get for the Irish to come back. Seven catches, 75 yards, and of course, the spectacular one-handed grab. I mean, man, that was awesome to watch. Yeah, I mean, everyone sort of has been overlooking him as a pass catcher this year because of Holden Stays and how good he was in the North Carolina State game especially. But don't sleep on Mitchell Evans. He's tight end one for a reason. Yeah, he's no Michael Mayer, but he is still very, very good. And he's an Ohio kid, so he had the ball out against the school that did not recruit him at all. And he definitely showed why he is such a star for the Irish. I love that. Also, he's been really important on run blocking. Sure. So that was a big return for him as well. And that's one thing I'm not too worried. People are, oh, my gosh, Notre Dame has possibly three receivers that are injured. And I don't think it's going to hurt them too much because they are so loaded. And then you've got guys like Mitchell Evans back at tight end, and they're utilizing the tight end so much more. So I think they'll be okay. Yeah. Estime is going to have to have a big game tonight. For sure. I agree. It's definitely all about this run <laughs> game today. But we'll see. Yeah, and so my hot take of today is that Notre Dame will win the turnover battle. Uh, Duke is a very good turnover team. They're one of the top teams in turnover margin, and Notre Dame has been incredibly unlucky with turnovers. They have forced seven fumbles, recovered zero. They are one of the only teams in the top 50 of turnover differential without a fumble recovery. Now, two of the other teams are Georgia and Washington, so you can still have good teams with no fumble recoveries, but I think that changes today. I think they win the turnover battle, and they finally recover a fumble. All right. Well, I, I hope you're right. Let's yeah, go. We'll see. <laughs> Another hot take. All yes. right, Dave. All right, let's keep this party going. What's coming next? Behind From Ireland to Ohio Ireland. State and everywhere in between, we're just about halfway through the season, but we've already made a lifetime of memories. We take a look back at some of the fun we've had right here on ABC 57 kickoff next. The Irish are just about halfway through the season, and so far, it's been quite the ride. Not only for Notre Dame, but for ABC 57 kickoff, too. We go beyond the X's and O's, having fun with Notre Dame coaches, players, legends, not to mention the epic road trips. We've climbed mountains in Ireland and walked the streets of Dublin with a Notre Dame leprechaun. I actually love it. I love it. And even shared a pint or two of the good stuff along the way. Let's go! We've graced the stage at the Newt Rackney Spirit of Sports Awards. Jack Mullins, got it. We've gone inside the lines. I went out <laughs> and I made this sign, Levi's Parlays, for anybody looking to win some money. And inside the tailgates. From a step show. Well, we walked it, we run it, we twist, we hop, we get for O. To the most popular fan at Notre Dame, OB. Let's do it. And our live guests have been some of the best we've ever had. Look at this crew behind me. I mean, come on. I don't want to go anyplace else. From quarterbacks like Brandon Wimbush and Evan Sharpley to running backs Cam McDaniel, John Mosley, and Ryan Grant. Super Bowl champ wide receiver Derek Mays. Thank you very much. Appreciate right. it. Go Thank Irish. You. And Heisman Trophy winner Tim Brown. Man, I like that. Welcome. Yes. <laughs> Can I get that? Can you yeah, give me that script? I'll put it in my I'll be your hype man. Yeah, Every time you absolutely. walk in a room, I got you. Irish legends feel right at home on ABC 57 kickoff. 
from Pro Bowl tight end Kyle Rudolph to Hall of Fame receiver Tom Gatewood and former quarterbacks Deshaun Kaiser and Brady Quinn. Come on, it's about my man Sam. Um, you know, he's going to be the starting quarterback and he came here for a reason. We pride ourselves on bringing you Notre Dame coverage you can't find anywhere else. Heisman Trophy winner and head coach of the Tennessee State Tigers, Eddie George allowed us on the field for their walkthrough. Golick in a golf cart in the Emerald Isle. Oh! <laughs> and Junior stealing the golf cart while Dad's away. It's definitely a stolen bit, but that's fine. That's showbiz, baby. And we've taken you inside the Notre Dame Sports Nutrition Program, where Alexa Appleman and her staff are fueling the Irish, not only with food, but with life skills. She's just great at, you know, being flexible and understanding that each guy's got their own nutritional values, um, nutritional needs. Notre Dame kicker Spencer Schrader shared his journey from soccer to South Florida and eventually South Bend. That probably put a little bit of seed in my head at the time that I can maybe end up here someday. And linebacker J.D. Bertrand played on the same Irish field his father won a rugby championship on. It was a little surreal and I think it will be again and almost more this time with so many people from my family, our family friends from Ireland, just everyone being there. And we go one-on-one -on -one with the most fashionable man in college football for Freestyle with Marcus Freeman. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I thought we got rid of that picture. That's back in college. That's in college. I was a lot bigger then and had less hair. My wife definitely didn't pick out that shirt. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I love it. And the Irish legend, Hall of Fame coach Lou Holtz, shared what he hopes he is remembered for at Notre Dame. Well, my wife is very fair, and all our children would go to a great site, and we have a beautiful tombstone, not outlandish, but it's a nice one. And it has Beth Holtz and Lou Holtz, and people say, I didn't know he died. In any event, I don't worry about legacy. I just try to make good choices, follow three rules, and you always will. Rule number one, do what's right. Rule number two, do everything the best of your ability. And the third rule is show people you care. Well, he was certainly controversial this week, wasn't he? Now, we are not slowing down anytime soon, and we are back on the road next week at Louisville. We also have some amazing stories coming up with Ga Wang, the man behind Marcus Freeman's unforgettable looks, and former team manager, now four-star Army General Brian Fenton, and a father and son duo, duo who just attended their 100th Notre Dame game. Very cool. So still lots more to come on ABC 57 kickoff. We're just getting started and we're at the halfway point. Now there was good, some bad, and then it just got ugly. It's time to ask the experts. Coming up, Sean Styers from Irish Breakdown joins us. The lesson learned against Ohio State and the challenges the Irish now face. With the same rich tradition of the, of the Irish. Irish. Wake up, the Echo's cheering her name. Send the volley, cheer on. Shake down the thunder from the sky. What though the odds be great or small? Old Notre Dame will win overall. While her loyal sons and daughters. March on a victory. It's Tim Brown Heisman Trophy winner, and you're watching ABC 57 kickoff. You're watching ABC 57 Kickoff, presented by Afdent Dental, with your hosts, Allison Hayes and Vahid Sadrazadeh. You are taking a live look at Wallace Wade Stadium, where the Irish will be trying to avoid a hangover as they get ready to face off against the 17th ranked Blue Devils. It's a 7.30 kickoff tonight, right here on ABC 57. Well, welcome back to ABC 57 kickoff. I'm Allison Hayes. Beating Duke tonight could help get Notre Dame season back on track, but a second straight loss would put an end to any hope of reaching the college football playoffs. ABC 57's Levon Whitaker joining us now live once again from Durham, where the Irish not ready to hit the panic button just yet. Yeah, well, Allison, that's because it was tough to see, but Notre Dame actually had a lot, of, a lot of positives in that loss to Ohio State. Now, going back to last year's matchup, first week of the season, 
Freeman said the Irish were playing not to lose against Ohio State, but this year he said they actually played to win. They did their best. Unfortunately, it just came down to the very last play of the game that changed the narrative and the entire outcome of that game against Ohio State. There was a lot of positives from the game, which obviously nobody was going to really care about because of the outcome. With Sam Hartman running the offense, it allowed the Irish to be gutsy from the jump. I mean, any time we're across the 50, I mean, it's, I'm going to probably go for it on fourth and one. You're either going to be all in and do it or not. That mentality kept the Irish off the board in the first half, and they didn't score on the first two drives in Buckeyes territory. We have to be able to make our field goals. We can't miss field goals. But after 10 unanswered points, Hartman settled in. The Notre Dame O-line looked like one of the best in the country. The running backs opened up the pass game, and the Irish went on their own 14-0 run. If you would have told me going to that game, we would have zero three and outs, zero sacks, zero turnover, zero drops, zero penalties, run for 176 yards, and not win, I would have said, no way. It's hard to believe, especially if you're Mitchell Levin, who racked up seven catches for 75 yards. I learned that, like, you know, put a linebacker on me, I'll win. Put a safety on me, I'll win. The young tight end putting the world of college football on notice. That game kind of proved I think I got guarded by number eight and I think 22, 35, number six was on me a little bit. So, like, you know, I kind of learned I can go against anybody and pretty much win. So. Evans, who's coming back from a concussion, has only played in three games this season. But if he can stay on the field with a dynamic run game and Sam Harmon leading the charge, this offense should be in good hands like Allstate. Sam's the vet. You know, he's 24 years old. He started in 50-plus college football games. Uh, this isn't his first rodeo. I mean, I, I know I can count on that guy to get his job done every time. He's an awesome football player, awesome leader, awesome friend. Well, we know that Hartman has the leadership tonight. He's going to have to do a better job at finding Mitchell Evans just as much as he did against Ohio State because you got a couple of guys out. Deion Cozy, the wide receiver, out after having surgery on his knee. And then Jaden Thomas, the second leading wide receiver on this team and receiving yards, has a questionable tag with a strained hamstring. So it also could be a big time game for Chris Tyree who switched to wide receiver this year now that you are kind of shorthanded at the wide receiver position. Live outside of Wallace Way Stadium, I'm Levon Whitaker, ABC 57 kickoff. All right, thanks Levon. I'm waiting for Chris Tyree to have a big game anyways, but hey, we are joined now by Sean Styers from Irish Breakdown. Let's actually break down this matchup. You want I know to? We <laughs> talked just a, a little bit about Ohio State over and over and over and over uh -huh. again at nauseum, but we're trying to move forward. But you kind of have to combine the two just a bit to, to kind of be able to move forward. You have to be able to get through what happened at Ohio State. For sure. Starting off with Sam Hartman, I thought he had a good game, but not a great game against the Buckeyes. I was hoping for him to just absolutely dominate and take over and be this leader that we thought. And I thought he just never really looked comfortable. And he had all day. He had all the protection that he could have needed, but he just, I, I don't know. He didn't, see, and his numbers were good, but he, it just, when, when you needed him the most, he didn't come up with those big plays. I kind of thought he would too, and especially when you consider the fact that you've got the most experienced quarterback in college football against Kyle McCord from Ohio State, who is still a, relatively young quarterback. He was only making his fifth career start. And when you look at the way Cal McCord and Ohio State were able to finish, that's kind of what I envision maybe for Sam Hartman. Like like if, if the game came down to the final drive, that kind of thing, that, that Hartman was going to be the guy who could finish. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. The other side of that is, again, when you look at his experience, this is still, when you look at Ohio State, it's probably the second best defense he's ever faced. You know, he obviously faced Clemson a couple of times when he was at Wake Forest and when Clemson's defenses were still kind of some of the more vaunted defenses in the country. So this is still a, 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 a pretty high level of competition that he faced out there last week. Well, and touch on the defense that they're gonna, he's going to be facing today against Duke. This is the Blue Devils' bread and butter is that D. Right, and I, and I think that it's still, like when you look at, at, at Duke's defense across, I'm not, you know, try to take anything away from Duke. But I, I think it's 
probably comparable a little bit to what he saw against North Carolina State a couple of weeks ago. I almost said North Carolina. North Carolina State a couple of weeks ago. Like, uh, just across the board, the biggest thing that they do is turn the ball over. They're, they're number nine in the country in turnover margin. Last year, they were plus 16 in turnover margin. They're not quite that good last year, but they really lean on this defense to, to put the offense in good situations. Well, you know, so just a couple of quick notes about Sam Hartman. He's 20, has 21 completions of 20 yards or more. That's tied for six best in the FBS. Meanwhile, the Duke Blue Devils, that, that's been one of the things that they are leading the country in, in preventing. They've only just allowed one pass of more, or of 18 yards this season. That was against Clemson. Right. So that's something to be a, keep an eye out for as well. And Wake Forest last year when... Sam Hartman was the quarterback, lost to the Blue Devils in November. So he's got some history there as well. Let's move us forward here just a little bit. Um, you know, every week we ask Marcus Freeman about that pass rush and how important it is. But uh, how important is it, especially this week, when you've got a quarterback like Riley Leonard at Duke who's mobile, he can run it, he can pass it? Well, it's funny because, again, like if I'm using North Carolina State as the comp, they have Brennan Armstrong, very mobile quarterback. Notre Dame did a great job of keeping him in check that day. Duke has Riley Leonard, who's a very mobile quarterback. They really rely on Riley Leonard for their offense. He only has two touchdown passes, but he's completing 67% of his passes. The downside for that, for them, for Duke, is the fact that they're not a very downfield offense. They're going to spread it around. They only average 11.9 yards per, per completion, which ranks 74th in the nation. Notre Dame's really good with the pass efficiency defense. They're really good at not allowing, for the most part, the big play. So I, I think it, the, what Notre Dame has to do is essentially what they did against Brennan Armstrong. Keep him in the pocket, not let him get going downfield with his legs. He'll make the first read, he'll make the second read. Typically, if one of those isn't there, he's going to tuck it and run. So Notre Dame's got to be careful just not to let him be a game breaker with his legs. Now, before we say goodbye, just really quick, can you give me a prediction on this <laughs> and why? I tell you what, you know, because this is a, a you know, a really solid Duke defense, it's, it's it, you know, again, the comp, I think, is North Carolina State, but not quite as athletic. I think Notre Dame should be able to run the ball today. I think Sam Hartman should be able to distribute the ball and kind of play off that, that run. Let's see more Roderick Estime today. <laughs> um, I think Notre Dame, I'm, I, I did my prediction a little on the conservative side. I've got Notre Dame winning 30-17. to 17. I, think, I think it could be, you know, maybe within a touchdown either direction of that, though. All right. Of course, the Notre Dame insider taking the Irish are the, the uh, Duke insider taking the Blue Devils today. Of course. Today. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Sean no Steyer's problem. Irish Breakdown. Stick around. We'll be right back. There's no denying it. The Irish let a win for the ages slip through their fingers in the final moments against Ohio State last week. We all thought we would know the identity of this group by now. The reality is the character of Coach Marcus Freeman's team will show itself tonight at Duke. In this week's Freeman's Focus, we measure greatness on how Notre Dame responds after heartbreak. Great teams find a way to execute when it matters the most. That's what great teams do. And, um, you know, we did it. In any sport, greatness can be determined by tenths of a second, by stats. You would have told me going to that game, we would have had zero three and outs, zero sacks, zero turnover, zero drops, zero penalties, run for 176 yards and not win. I would have said, no way. Or by mere inches. We needed to execute at the end of the game, and, and we didn't, Ohio State did. On Saturday, the Irish were a down, a timeout, an interception, a second, and yes, an inch away from greatness. They've taken it personally in terms of as individuals, um, and you want that. They put everything they had, coaches, players, and we still lost. And, and the pain of defeat, it, it's tough. In the midst of that pain, you got to own it. And you gotta face it, and you gotta attack it, and you gotta go back to work, and you gotta pick your head up, and you can't feel sorry for yourself. Coach Freeman's message: Redemption can and should be part of greatness. I have a saying: We say, choose hard. You're gonna have to choose hard, no matter how you feel right now, and truly face the mistakes, attack them, and go to work. Like it or not, the path for these players to get to the playoffs will be hard. Win out and there's still a chance they'll be left out of the top four. But Freeman isn't worried about other teams. He's worried about his own. Well, there was 
the emotion of we didn't play at our full potential. And that's still what it's about. To see greatness, Notre Dame will have to take a detour and summon the bumpy road to better, as Coach has called it, starting Saturday at Duke. We game plan for an opponent, but Notre Dame has to execute at the level that we need Notre Dame to, and that's our focus, and that's my focus, and that's got to be what our team is focused on. Bouncing back is something Freeman's team in 2022 did very well. After starting the season 0-2, the Irish won nine of their final 11 games. This year's team has a similar opportunity ahead of them. Can they play their best ball with all the cards on the table? We shall find out. Allison? Meyer floats it for Bettis. Touchdown! Jerome the Bus Bettis ran over defenders at Notre Dame, finishing his career with more than 2,300 all-purpose yards and a combined 37 rushing and receiving touchdowns. Considered one of the best power running backs in NFL history, he won Super Bowl 40 with the Pittsburgh Steelers and was later inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Joining us now, Irish legend Jerome Bettis. I'm the one who had you drive the bus in South Bend when you were here on campus. I remember. Oh, I remember. yeah. Yes, in the parking lot at the hockey arena. Yes, sir. We still use that today. It's epic. It's one of the best things we've ever done at the station, so we can't thank you enough for that. Of course, the Irish are coming off an, a heartbreaker of a loss against Ohio State. I just wonder, in your career, did you ever suffer a, a, just a devastating loss similar to that? And how do you overcome that as a player and as a team, especially when Notre Dame has an undefeated Duke up next? Yeah, so we, we, we had a couple games that were heartbreakers. One, uh, we had a Tennessee game. Uh, in at Notre Dame one year that was devastating for us. Another year we had a Stanford game at, uh, at toward the end of the year that was a devastating loss. Probably cost us a national championship. And so, so we had a couple of those very tough losses um, at home. Uh, and and then you just have to pick yourself up and, and realize that you are a quality football team and that you know what. You didn't make the plays that you needed to make, but you have another opportunity next week. And let's go out next week and show them that we can make the plays that we need to make in order to win the football game. Well, of course, Notre Dame has Audric Estime. He's drawing some comparisons to you. What do you like about Audric's game? And I mean, how important is it for the Irish to have him out there on the field, especially when the game is on the line? Well, it, it's important to have him out there. He is a stud. He's a, he's a big back. He runs physical. He's downhill, and he puts pressure on the defense. So, yes, to have him out there on the field is definitely a benefit. Uh, and so, you want to you want to keep him fresh, keep him out there, and keep him pounding away because he creates an advantage uh, for Notre Dame. When you look at that football game, I saw a a dominant offensive line, dominant defensive line, and I saw a running game running behind their, their shoulder pads and getting after that Ohio State uh, defense. And, and un it was unfortunate that they weren't able to win the football game because I promise you the talk, the, all the talk would have been how dominant the offensive line and defensive line looked throughout the night. Absolutely, and I think those were big question marks going into the game was how were they going to match up and both really played well throughout the whole matchup. Well, thank you so much. I could talk to you all day, but I know you have to go, so we appreciate your time and <laughs> everything you do for Notre Dame. Of course, the legend and Super Bowl champ, Jerome Bettis. Thank you for joining us on ABC 57 Kickoff. A top 20 showdown under the lights. Notre Dame is a slight favorite over Duke tonight. But where should you put your money? We take you inside the lines, plus our final predictions coming up. My little one to at the top, and I just look at the ball's there. I'm like, oh, sand through it.
Um, obviously, we all have plays that we went back, and I have a couple of plays that went back. That video had me so fired up until that final shot. Yeah, of the that was players. tough to watch oh, at the end. <laughs> the fans, you just relive it over and over and over again. But a lot of good happened in that game that sure. keeps getting lost in the final seconds. But a, a loss is an L on the schedule, so what do you do? But, hey, at last check, Notre Dame, a five-and-a-half point favorite today. The over-under is 52-and-a-half points. It was a defensive battle last week against Ohio State, but this week, the Irish face a new and improved Duke. Yeah, and it should be great weather for that game, but where should you place your money? Not on the forecast because that's going to be money, but let's send it to ABC 57's Levon Whitaker live in Durham for the answer. Levon. Hey, hey, Dave, I like that. I like that. Don't place it on the forecast. But listen, last week could be, was kind of disappointing. Uh, hard to predict exactly what would happen in that game between Ohio State and Notre Dame. Um, there was a lot not a lot of gutsy calls in that game that will help any of the bets that we actually came up with last week. And that's something that we talked about with Douglas Farmer with Covers.com. Let's see what he has to say about this game tonight against Duke under the lights here at Wallace Way Stadium. Duke is really good. They are 13-4 and four under Mike Elko in the last season and a month. That is the first time, no, excuse me, in the last 60 years, Duke has had a better 17-game stretch once. This is that kind of Duke team, a, a program high over decades, led by a first or second round NFL quarterback in Riley Leonard. Notre Dame, is that's why Notre is favored by only five and a half. Yeah, some of it's the hangover from the Ohio State loss, but a lot of it is just credit to Duke, credit to what will be arguably the biggest game in Duke football history. And all of that scares me off with betting the spread, betting the money line. I'm just taking the dead under. Notre Dame, Duke, 53, opened at 52 or 52 and a half. Give me the under 53. Assume both defenses junk this game up. Notre Dame's defense really showed out against Ohio State, and it's going to have its work cut out against Riley Leonard, but it should be able to manage that. And Duke's defense is, again, it's just really good, Levon. Like, people are not giving enough credit to Duke because the focus this week has still been on last week. And you've got to worry about that with Notre Dame. That's why I'm staying away from the spread, staying away from trying to figure out exact edges in this game, and I'm just acknowledging the two best units on the field are the two defenses. Now, listen, I know that these, both of these teams have really good defenses, but when I think about Duke, I think about the hype that surrounded Syracuse when we went into that matchup against Syracuse in Syracuse last year. Notre Dame is just levels ahead of those teams, and they're going to come out and lay it on thick, in my opinion. Now, you know I'm not the over-under guy, Allison and Dave. I like to hit the big money parlay, so Levon's parlay is on the roll. So take a look at this week's parlay against Duke. I've got Notre Dame winning this game by at least six points. Audric estimate two touchdowns. Mitchell, yeah, you can boo. You can boo all you want. <laughs> Mitchell Evans over 52 and a half receiving yards. Chris Tyree over 34 and a half receiving yards. And Sam Hartman, two plus touchdowns. They're booing, but they're going to be sad tonight like we were last week against <laughs> Ohio State. <laughs> all right, Levi, I love it. And you said you liked no everything Irish. you had for the parlays <laughs> except for one thing. Yeah, I would switch the tight ends, Levon. I think Mitchell Evans is going to take more of a run-blocking backseat this game, and Holden stays after not really being a factor last week is going to replace him as the number one tight end receiving-wise this week. Well, we will see. All right, I want to get some uh, I wish uh, I could have made that bad set. He wasn't available. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's going to get the first score in this game today? If you take a look at our – look at this. Everybody all the way around, me, you, Vahid, everybody says Audric Estime. He should get the first touchdown. He should get the last touchdown. He should be on the field the whole game. Let that man do his job. Let him eat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, our next one is who's going to get the first turnover in this game? And, Dave, you said you think that turnovers are going to be a huge issue in this game. Yeah, I mean, Duke is – is such a, a good team in forcing turnovers and hanging on to those turnovers. Uh, we, I think, are finally going to see Notre Dame end their terrible fumble recovery luck. They have forced seven fumbles this year. 
recovered zero of them. That is not a great stat. It has to change sometime, and I think tonight is the night where it happens. And Howard Cross is going to get that fumble recovery. All right, as we're running out of time here, final score predictions. Levon, what you got? I got 30 to 14 Notre Dame. They're going to lay it on thick once again. A run game. Ardrick Estime, a career high in carries tonight. All right, great job, Levi. We'll look forward to your reports from Durham tonight. You'll watch the game right here on ABC 57 at 730. Thank you for watching ABC 57 kickoff. Go Irish.